The gentleman scholar doesn't exist anymore as such. But these artists, the ink artists, are the closest we've got to it. They are scholars, they are intellectuals, uh, but at the same time they are very avant-garde, they're very experimental. So it's the closest we have to the literati of the past. What is going on today is that the intelligent artist, the intelligent Chinese, is looking for ways to overcome the cultural vacuum, the social vacuum that existed from uh, 1949 onwards when Mao took over communism took hold and are trying to overcome that vacuum. In other words, reach back and say, this is the greatest civilization ever and the longest ever, but we have to find a way to express it in ways that are meaningful and relevant to today's world. They are interested in transforming art, transforming the great classical tradition of China into something for today. So they differ from their predecessors in the last 20 years, the oil painters in China who have deliberately exploited the political themes in order to titillate a Western audience's interest in their defiance of the regime in China. The ink painters never really went that direction. They are more interested in art for art's sake, if you like, but there's now a recognition both in China and elsewhere in the world, and that's the Metropolitan Show is a good example of it that these people are really probably the quintessential expressors, if you like, of Chinese contemporary society. There is a cultural revolution happening in China, and it's not just happening in art, it's happening in music, philosophy, architecture and design, theatre, it's happening in literature. China's resurgence, its new self-confidence, is translating into works of tremendous audacity and range all over the cultural spectrum. There is a residue which has never been extinguished in the Chinese psychology, which is this reverence for culture and education. And I believe it exists just as much today as it ever did in the past, and it's just about to re-emerge.